Hey guys, I am Nitij and today we are going to dive into Web Vitals which is a key metric that Google believes are crucial for a healthy website. We will explore what these metrics are, why they matter and I will also show you how to measure and log them in your React applications. So the most important Web Vitals that are important to be considered for any web applications are number one lcp or largest contentful paint then there is the fid or first input delay and then there is the cls which is cumulative layout shift the largest contentful paint measures the time it takes for the largest content element on your page to load and become visible for the user this could be anything an image a video or any large block of text FID or first input delay measures the time from when a user is able to first interact with your page such as clicking a link or a button to the time when the browser can actually begin processing event handlers in response to that interaction. Cumulative layout shift or CLS measures the sum total of all individual layout shift scores for every unexpected layout shift that occurs on the page. Layout shifts can happen for many reasons such as font files loading, page components loading asynchronously etc. In your React applications created using CRA or create react app command, you can already find the report webvitals.js file in your application that you can use. Now this function report web vitals which is being exported as a default module, it accepts another function as an argument. And this argument function is going to be called for each of the web vital metric. Now you must be thinking from where it is getting these functions like get CLS, get FID, etc. So for that, your CRA or create React app application is using the web vitals third party package. Now by default, it is using version 2, but you can choose to use version 3 as well. The major difference between version 2 and version 3 is the naming convention so in version 2 the functions are named as get and then the metric value such as get cls get fid etc but in version 3 they are named as on xxx or on metric value such as on cls on fid etc so if you want to use the latest version then you will simply have to remove the existing dependency from your package and then open up your console and then write the command npm install and then web vitals this is automatically going to add the latest version inside your dependency list but if you will do that then you will have to modify the existing um, get cls get fid etc to on cls on fid and so on now you can use the web vitals in two ways. You can either log these web vital values inside the console so that you can see if there is any discrepancy or if something is wrong with any of the web vital metric or you can also send these values to your analytic endpoint. If you simply want to log these values to the console then you will have to open up your index.js file and then in the end of this file you can see the report web vitals function being used so you will simply have to provide the console.log function as an argument and your application will start logging all the different web vital metric but if you don't want to log them to the console or if in addition to logging them to the console you want to send them to an analytic endpoint as well you can simply open up this url to learn more about how to do it so to send the web vital metric information to an analytic endpoint you can create another function such as this one send to analytics and then you will simply have to call navigator.sendbeacon so send beacon accepts two arguments the first one is the um, your endpoint url and the second one is the body for the body you can simply json.stringify your metric object so you must be thinking what is navigator.sendbeacon. So navigator.sendbeacon is an alternative for fetch. So navigator.sendbeacon has a few features which makes it different from fetch. 
these features are that it is asynchronous or non-blocking and it is also more reliable than fetch it is reliable in sending data because it does that right before the document is about to be unloaded due to the navigation or closing of the browser using the fetch api is not so reliable because we will then have to use the unload or before unload event handlers which are not that much reliable so navigator.sendbeacon is more preferable than fetch and because we are not expecting any response from sendbeacon its usage becomes even more simpler finally when you will use console.log as your function argument then this is how the different web vital metrics are going to be logged into the console you can see the rating values as well which says good for all of these because this is just a boilerplate application which is running on our local server if you have an application which is running on a production server then using these values you can check out where your application needs to improve in any of the metrics values or you can also use google lighthouse as well but these values are normally sent to any analytics server which can then later be used by developers to work on any performance related issues so guys that was everything on this small tutorial on web vitals and how to integrate them with your react application if this video helped you to understand and implement web vitals then please consider subscribing to stay updated with more tutorials and tips i'm nitij and i will see you in the next video